Unit B, Hazardous Substances and Agents, Element B1, Managing Occupational Health. Three learning outcomes, B1.1, Outline the nature of occupational health, B1.2, Outline the principles and benefits of the management of the return to work, including the role of outside agencies. B1.3, Outline the management of occupational health, including practical and legal aspects. Okay, in the first part, we'll have a, a look at the meaning of occupational health. Uh, we'll look at the definition of health and well-being. We'll categorize health hazards, chemical, physical, biological, psychological, and ergonomic. And we'll look at the prevalence of work-related sickness and ill health. And we'll look at links between occupational health and general public health. Okay, so B1.1, the meaning of health. According to the WHO, the meaning of health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. According to the ILO, the meaning of occupational health is the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, social and mental well-being of workers in all occupations by preventing departures from health, controlling risks and adapting work to people and people to their jobs. Uh, we'll look at the definition of well-being according to the E. CRC, Economic and Social Research Council. Well-being is defined as a state of well-being, a state of being with others where human needs are met, where we can act meaningfully to pursue one's goals and where one enjoys a satisfactory life. So it's all about feelings of fulfillment, happiness and satisfaction. B1.1.4 the categories of occupational health hazards so they can be grouped in chemical physical biological psychosocial and ergonomic or psychological perhaps okay so for chemical we have dust fibers gases vapors and their associated hazards for physical we got noise vibration radiation heat so it's like environmental and for biological things like bacteria, funguses, viruses, and parasites. For psychological, there are hazards that affect mental well-being. So they are workplace violence, stress, substance misuse, discrimination, harassment. Then finally, ergonomic. So these are things like work posture, uh, workplace or job layout, job. Uh, uh, specifications perhaps okay process specifications how things are done okay so these are not the sole contributing factors okay so there are influences in slow accidents and occupation ill health okay so in 1.15 we're going to look at the prevalence of work-related sickness and ill health with reference to reportable and self reported information sources. So self-reported information sources is data gathered internally. So it's absences, looking for trends in the data, patterns in the data there. So it is estimated that globally there are 2.3 million work-related uh, deaths annually. By far the largest proportion of these deaths is work-related diseases. So 2 million of those 2.3 million are work-related deaths okay so it's from illness in the UK work-related illness kills an estimated 13,000 people each year with a majority resulting from lung disease about 90 percent and uh, stress accounts for around half of work-related illnesses and incidences of cases remained uh, broadly flat over the past decade so stress is the main contributing factor for days off work. Sources of information are RIDER, reporting of injuries, disease and dangerous occurrence regulations 
2013. So we've got LFS, the Labour Force Survey. Thor, the Health and Occupational Reporting Network. And we have the Industrial Injuries Scheme. And you can look at things like death certificates also. So there is a clear uh, linkage between health in both the workplace and the public. Okay, And how they are managed is very much interlinked as we can see in the coronavirus cases. The basic principles of the biopsychosocial model and how it relates to the health of individuals. So the model is made up of three parts with health at the center. So we have biological, we have social and psychological. Okay. So that is very, very important. So biological is things like our physical health, uh, maybe genetic vulnerabilities, our mental health, temperament, anything like that. Social is our peers, our family school pressures, fam uh, traumas, anything like that, and social skills and self-esteem, confidence. Okay. So pr uh, principles of fitness to work standard. So the principles are that some professions require a certain minimum level of fitness to fulfill their jobs in a safe manner. So these levels may need to be assessed prior to work and reassessed during work to identify any underlying conditions. So there's a need to identify any individual's condition limiting, reducing or preventing them from performing their job effectively. Okay, so the role and benefits of pre-placement assessments is to identify any condition that may limit an individual's ability in performing their duties. It may also be a legal compliance in certain roles and industries and of course, adheres to things like discrimination regulations. So, occupational health services could do some uh, pre employment screening. They could utilize self questionnaires, medical exams, tests, and furthermore, they could use health surveillance as a, a new employee works in their job. So, they ensure workers are fit to work or that maybe adjustments are needed to their job or job specifications. So the data collected provides a baseline for future assessments. So in these assessments, we can be fit, unfit, or provisionally fit. So in provisionally fit, potential adjustments are maybe required, further observation is maybe required, maybe important to do a probationary period, uh, or offer further treatment and maybe further surveillance of the new employee. So managing short and long term frequent sickness, absence and incapacity for reference to the PH19 NICE model. So it's important to be proactive in policy, have a buddy system where workers are contacted fairly regularly with someone they have a good relationship with someone in their team or maybe a line manager perhaps so if there are absence for say longer than two weeks it's important to establish the reason for absence and uh, any kind of sick days should be reported and analyze these data for types of patterns frequencies things like that so with reference to ph19 nice uh, the four main parts are the initial inquiries so it's like what is wrong with a person? Do they have uh, any medical certification as evidence or proof to support their claim for illness? So if there is uh, suitable proof and they're off long term, so like maybe greater than two weeks, it may be important to make a detailed assessment of their con condition, maybe using so experts and maybe have to use an interview perhaps to look at barriers that are preventing them from returning to work or perhaps look at adjustments to get them back to work okay so it could be adjusting their job role their job requirements job processes maybe adjusting their time 
is the hours they work maybe adjusting the days they work okay so how can we make it easier for them to get back so if they are still sick for a long term there may be impor uh, important to make interventions okay so interventions could be things like uh, just giving light interventions would be like giving some advice where intensive interventions could be special treatments and counseling maybe from external providers and hopefully by the end of the whole process we would get the ill or incapacitated worker to return to work okay so we're going to look at vocal uh, vocational rehabilitation so vocational rehabilitation is whatever helps someone with a health problem stay at return to or remain in work okay so specifically it's looking at how do we get people back to work after extended periods of sickness incapacity or illness so it's important to get these employees to regain their ability to participate in work okay so we're going to look at the benefits of vocational rehabilitation so employer benefits of course are reduced absence rates which in turn power improved productivity and a healthier more positive work environment with hopefully reduced sickness and stress prevalence will be greater employee satisfaction lower turnover of workers knowledge retention reduced temporary costs for employing uh, maybe contract staff and of course reputational benefits for the company employee benefits would be a better physical and mental health having a, a job they enjoy and feel safe and healthy in as well as increased financial security so it's important to have some sort of return to work controls within this vocational rehabilitation so it could be phased returns workplace adaption hour alterations or amended duties and processes so how do we overcome any barriers to ensure rehabilitation is effective? So we're going to look at the biological barriers, okay? So is there any barriers how we can overcome these uh, problems? Maybe like a musculoskeletal disease. So this is perhaps an ergonomic consideration, okay? So how could you improve the their work layout, for instance? Psychological barriers could be things like extreme stress PTSD where maybe counseling is needed social barriers could be problems within their team or work environment uh, maybe an environment of bullying workplace violence so that maybe need to be uh, looked into as well so effective rehabilitation will occur that employer recognizes these barriers and takes steps to eliminate or reduce their impact this often requires the involvement of internal occupational health services and external agencies who offer advice also. Okay, so why do we need a review risk assessments prior to return to work? So a risk assessment should not focus on the person's ill health or disability, but should look more broadly at their overall demands of their job and how any risks can be appropriately managed with. Okay. So you're going to look at specific needs of the individual with respect to their uh, ill health condition or disability. So you're going to look at the design of their job, the work environment, such as work access, their layout, things like that, work equipment, processes. Look at health hazards for each individual. So remember, chemical, uh, biological, ergonomic, psychosocial, okay think about that uh, maybe they need some specific training or counseling to overcome this and look into again the psychosocial aspects of their workplace so in addition could you think about fire safety regulations so maybe they need uh, some sort of special uh, consideration for fire management issues Okay, so liaison with other disciplines and assessing the fitness to work. So this is very important. It needs a combined approach, collaboration, inclusion, 
transparency, communication, okay? So it's important to help anticipate, prevent, and advise and guide employers, employees, and their reps to ensure a healthy work environment so employees can stay, return to, or remain at work, okay? So there has to be an inclusive approach where everybody is on the same page and they understand the importance of getting the person back to work. So the role of external agencies that can offer support, we've got things like primary care, that's the your doctor or private care, the NHS, DWP Job Centre Plus, so they offer advice for both employers and employees, ATW Access to Work helps people with disabilities, uh, we've got occupational therapists, they can be employed internally or they could be contracted external specialists and we've got fit to work the voluntary scheme where referrals can be made by the employer or a gp and this scheme offers specialist advice and treatment okay so think about the role and function and benefits of occupational health services so these services are entrusted with essentially the preventative functions and uh, responsibility for advising the employer, the workers and their in representatives, okay? So they are concerned with requirements for establishing and maintaining a self safe and healthy working environment which will facilitate optimal physical and mental health conditions in relation to work, okay? The adaption of work to the capabilities of workers in light of their state of physical and mental health, okay? Anticipate, prevent, advise and guide okay think about those words so the makeup of a typical occupational health service and the importance of competency so they could be like full-time doctors uh, maybe part-time nurses uh, could be contracted or full-time or maybe specialists like uh, dentists chiropractors uh, opticians perhaps physiotherapists okay so there's many different makeups so for determining competency it's important that they have all their qualifications and it's maybe important to have some references and background checks in them also so typical services provided would be uh, things like pre-employment screening as we've said questionnaires medical exams and uh, testing okay for staff joining the company and also for the staff employed in the company they also uh, could be given responsibility for health education campaigns so it's promotion and maintenance highlighting the need for a healthy and positive lifestyles so they could also be in charge of the management and provision of treatment services like first aid. They would administer things like vaccination and drug and alcohol screening, uh, maybe monitoring, management of the infectious diseases we've seen with corona. They should be involved in risk assessments, uh, have some input there, especially for uh, individuals like pregnant women or with specific disabilities perhaps. They could be in charge of management of health records and absence management. Okay, so it's things like um, analyzing data for specific patterns. Uh, biological monitoring could be heat, sound, dust, radiation. They should liaise with external bodies, as we've said. Uh, they should do HNAs, health needs assessments, where they uh, liaise, collaborate and get the opinions of the workplace to see what the, their priorities and concerns are regarding occupational health. They could be involved in specific health surveillance where they're looking at assessing uh, potential pro problems which uh, could be arise from a specific factor that has been uh, highlighted in previous assessments so they've identified a specific factor or problem that could cause or exacerbate uh, someone's condition and they can manage return to work rehabilitation programs 
So with anybody with uh, extended periods of sickness or absence or incapacity, how do they overcome the barriers and get them back to work? And they could offer things like counselling services also. Okay, so what are the benefits of a health needs assessment in relation to the planning of occupational health? A health needs assessment is a systematic method of reviewing the health issues of facing a population, leading to agreed priorities and plans for resource allocation that will improve the reduction of inequalities. So these types of initiatives foster collaboration and give workers ownership and responsibility for their occupational health needs. So they will highlight areas of concern and provide a baseline for future measurement. And they are main focuses determining priorities for rectification. Okay. These initiatives are very much resource dependent and uh, their scope and uh, uh, breadth really depends on senior commitment and this will impinge on the representative sample and just how detailed the studies are. So these studies should focus on things like job roles, job responsibilities, specific hazards, and maybe specific job processes to find patterns. Okay, so auditing of course for third parties is very important. So the standards in occupational health service would be things like SEQOHS. So SEQOHS is Safe, Effective, Quality Occupational Health Services. It's a voluntary accreditation and auditing scheme. And the body ensures OHS providers are of a satisfactory standard. So there's 50 specific standards in six main headings. And uh, it's important to vet third party contractors. And this scheme is run by the FOM, the Faculty of Medical Science. Okay, from the unit one, we have nine questions. So let's take a look at these questions. So question number one, state the five categories of health hazard, give an example of each. So these are chemical, so these are fibers, gases, dust, vapors, and their associated risks. Two, uh, physical factors, things like noise, heat, vibration, radiation. Three, these are biological factors, things like viruses, parasites, bacteria. Four, psychosocial stress, bullying, workplace violence, substance misuse. Five, ergonomics, it's like the workplace layout and their job processes, like repetitive processes. Number two, Outline some of the main sources of data used to compile occupational ill health statistics. So we have RIDER 2013, so it's reporting of disease and dangerous occurrence regulations. LFS, the Labour Force Survey. THOR, the Health and Occupational Reporting Network. The IIS, the Industrial Injury Scheme and Death Certificates. Internal sources will relate to data collected internally. Question number three, it says, give three examples of occupations where are likely to be defined fitness to work standards. So it'd be industries like uh, vehicle operating, so driving the public or for industrial purposes like forklifts, LGVs, cranes, buses, could be planes. So things like pilots and bus drivers, uh, industries that work at heights, so it's like abseilers, scaffolders people who work in, in confined spaces like industrial cleaners in the whiskey industry, maybe divers. Night shift workers should also be considered offshore workers and emergency medical technicians. Outline the meaning of vocational rehabilitation. Vocational rehabilitation is all the processes associated with getting people back to work after extended periods of sickness, incapacity, or ill health, okay? What is the biopsychosocial model? It's a model that considers health as more than a case of biological disease, okay? 
It's a holistic approach that includes biological, psycho psychological and social aspects and constraints. Okay. It looks at the contextual factors that influence health. Okay. Think about slow accidents. It's not usually one factor in ill health. It's usually a combination of factors. Uh, outline the typical functions of an occupational health service. There's things like pre-employment screenings. So in these pre-employment screenings, there's the potential to use questionnaires, uh, specific medical exams, or just general or specific employment purposes. Okay, health surveillance and monitoring. So it's routine checks or specific checks with the result of the presence of identified hazards. Uh, return to work rehabilitation programs, sickness absence management, counselling services, risk assessment involvement, health education promotions, uh, treatment services, and policy and compliance advice, and just general advice really. And the provision of things like uh, first aid, vaccination, drug and alcohol screening. So what is health surveillance? A requirement of good practice, okay? So when is health surveillance a requirement of good health practice? There have been identifiable adverse health conditions associated with specific work processes. Perhaps there's a valid techniques that have become available to monitor these factors. There's a reasonable likelihood that a problem occurs under identified conditions. Surveillance is a process that could likely help uh, further protect employees' health and safety and well-being. What is the purpose of carrying out a health needs assessment? So health needs assessments are carried out to identify occupational health priorities in the workplace so that managers can rectify these issues through proper consultation, planning and resource allocation. What is SEQOHS? So SEQOHS is the Safe, Effective, Quality Occupational Health Service. It is a voluntary assessment and accreditation scheme run by the Faculty of Medicine, the FOM. It is a set of 50 standards divided into five key areas that provides that, that shows providers are measured against to ensure their ability to deliver a fat, satisfactory level of service. Okay. So we're going to look at some questions later. So it says, a food manufacturing company employs 450 people. So it, tasks include production, warehousing, delivery and administration. So there are significant risks to workers from noise, manual handling, ergonomic issues and pressure at work. There is also a high level of sickness absence. Outline the possible benefits, composition, role and functions of the occupational health service for this organisation. So benefits of course would be legal uh, compliance, better management of sickness and absence, there's potential financial savings and uh, reduced turnover for instance. Experts contribute to risk assessments, access to specialist and uh, advice, independent advice. Okay. The composition of the health services could be a, v a variety of different uh, uh, methods. For example, an occupational health physician, uh, an occupational health nurse, a physiotherapist perhaps, a hygienist, uh, access to trained counsellors may be required, and maybe the use of ergonomicists. The role and function of the department would be training for staff on various uh, occupational health controls, pre-employment screening, health surveillance, record keeping, uh, return to work fitness assessments, sickness reviews, counselling, testing and monitoring, immunisation, drug and alcohol screening, any health problems like that. The occupational health specialist might make significant contributions to the management of various risks. For example, their contribution might include rehabilitation, counselling, involvement in risk assessments and assessing the adequacy of controls in place. The contribution of handling, handling and economic issues, ergonomic issues may include uh, risk assessments of their manual handling operations and activities. 
identifying appropriate controls or adjustments, uh, the assessment of workers' physical ability, things like eyesight or hearing, screening, rehabilitation of workers back into work. So their contribution to the management of noise hazards may include uh, noise risk assessment, uh, audiometry of a risk staff, and training for staff to use controls and PP and also monitoring. Uh, outline the possible functions of an occupational health service in a large manufacturing company. Okay, So the examiner would look for things like pre-employment screening, return to work assessments, biological monitoring, health surveillance, uh, contributing to health and safety policies, uh, providing of specialist input to risk assessments, health education and training, sickness absence monitoring and management, keeping health records, managing first aid provision, uh, rehabilitation programs, liaising with uh, external sources, immunization, drug and alcohol screening, counseling, and uh, monitoring things like dust, uh, fumes, anything like that, and analyzing work processes and people's fitness to work. So the answer would be something like, in a large manufacturing company, the functions of an occupational health service are many and varied. So it could involve pre-employment medicals are important in determining the fitness of employees joining the company and identifying any pre-existing medical conditions which could be worsened by work. They could be involved in routine or specific health surveillance, such as checks for dermatitis for people working with solvents, uh, noise or audiometric assessments and biological monitoring is also uh, important. Could be involved in stress counselling, uh, healthy lifestyle campaigns, so health promotion. They should be involved in risk assessments for potential health issues such as night shift working, where interventions or controls could be in place, where the jobs could be adapted. Occupational health professionals can also assist with the design of tasks and equipment and job layouts and the effects that arise from these uh, activities. They can also be involved in specific types of employees like pregnant people or people with certain disabilities. They could run training courses and education programs and uh, help in the return and rehabilitation of uh, fit to work initiatives and uh, finally the, the occupational health service plays a valuable role in monitoring and evaluating sickness and absence to event identify possible trends and recommend any action that could be taken to improve employees health they could also offer services like uh, first aid general advice counseling drug and alcohol screening okay